The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, There will be signs in the sun and moon and stars, and upon the earth distress of nations, in perplexity at the roaring of the sea and the waves. Men fainting with fear and with foreboding of what is coming on the world. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now, when these things begin to take place, look up and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. But take heed to yourselves. Lest your hearts will be weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and cares of this life. And that day come upon you suddenly like a snare. For it will come upon all who dwell upon the face of the whole earth. But watch at all times, praying to have strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. And very soon we are going to meet the king. Soon and very soon we are going to meet the king. Soon and very soon we are going to meet the king. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We are going to meet the king soon and There's no crying there. We are going to meet the king. There's no crying there. We are going to meet the king. There's no crying there. We are going to meet the king. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to meet the king soon and soon. Soon and soon Hallelujah, hallelujah We are going to see the king now 
come and join the train we are going to see the king oh come and join the train we are going to see the king over oh, now come and join the train we are going to see the king hallelujah hallelujah we are going to see the king soon and soon oh soon and Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we are going to see the King. Oh, what a joy we are going to see the king. Oh, what a joy we are going to meet the king. Oh, what a joy we are going to meet the king. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we are going to meet the king soon and soon. Oh, soon and soon and very hallelujah hallelujah we are going to see the king soon and now Soon and soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. Oh, very soon, we are going to see the king. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we are going to see the king. lead questions for today question number one what is the theme of the advent season in general question two in what way is the prophecy of jeremiah in today's first reading jeremiah 33 14 to 16 in what way is it a source of encouragement to all Christians in difficult situations? Christians that are sick, Christians that are poor, Christians that are unemployed, Christians that are taking care of sick and aged parents, Christians that are persecuted, Christians that are discriminated against, Christians that have suffered all kinds of indignities, humiliation in what way is today's first reading from jeremiah 33 14 to 16 a major source of consolation in these circumstances question three jesus says today take care lest your hearts be weighed down another translation says let your heart be coarsened with dissipation drunkenness and the cares of this life a by what kind of life by what kind of behavior can this happen can our hearts be coarsened can our hearts be weighed down by the cares of this world by what kind of behavior and b what must we do about it if we do not want that to happen now question four what is the one phrase or the one word that adequately captures all the readings of this sunday one word or one phrase okay helen 
said, let me answer the cheapest one since the children are not here. The yeah, theme, they are not here. There's one in front of you. <laughs> the theme of today's Advent um, session, be prepared. Look, the GBK doesn't answer such cheap questions. <laughs> she, he goes for the jugular. He doesn't answer that kind of cheap question. So the theme of today's Advent, Advent season is to be prepared for the coming of the King. Be prepared. Okay. For the coming of the King. Give her a round of applause. I think she got some. Eh? Okay. Yes, Emmanuel. I want to answer question three. Yes. Jesus says that they should take care lest their hearts be weighed down with dissipation, drunkenness, and the cares of this life. Yes. A. By what kind of life can this happen? Is when people love money very well that they would like to have everything in the world. They don't care about other people. And it's also when people are poor. When people love money too much. Yes. When they are rich and they want more. When they are rich and they want more. So it can weigh the hearts down. Then you also say when people are poor. Yes. Some people when they are poor they would like to. So that they can get money. Uh, so rich people still too. It's not only poor people who still. I mean. Rich people still in this country more than poor people. But I agree that poor people still. Uh, I had a professor yesterday with me um, at our... At our I had a professor from uh, Helens University at our recording. And then she said, in the university today, you can gather a group of students in a class and say, is stealing wrong? And they say, it depends. That it depends. Helen is from your university. That they say it depends. They can say sir, that. Nigeria, in the, Nigeria, a university student can say it depends. Wow. We are in trouble then. Say it depends. It depends on the circumstances. Wow. I didn't know we had gotten that bad. Is stealing wrong? They say it's wrongness. It depends. It depends. It depends. Wow. This is serious. I mean, what it means is um, Dr. Um, Keiji and Ogu, we have scandalized our young people. We have. Our generation has scandalized our young people. I mean, I don't want to hold only the young people responsible for this. I want to hold our generation responsible for this. I mean, if, if university students can tell us that stealing, it depends. There is something we are supposed to have done we did not do. May the Lord help us. Yes. And it's also when people want to receive bribes that they want the cares of it's this It's part of life. stealing. Bribe is part of the stealing, yes. And then what they must do to stop it is that the, for example since 2019 election is coming they should you know about it leaders. they should choose good leaders who will stop stealing. they should choose good leaders imagining that good leaders are presented to us to choose from okay right okay imagine that we have we have choices so sometimes we don't even have those choices that's part of the problem Okay, that they should choose good leaders. Yes, and people who will, should be ready to give. Who will teach us that stealing is bad? Yes. Who will show us how to live righteous life? Give me a round of applause. Uh, Mabel, you are still around. Long time. I just want to add to question three. By what kind of life can this happen? I think this can happen when we live the kind of life that is centered on the earthly world. This alone. world, earthly ultimate goals. Earthly yes. existence alone. When we center all our existence about my staying on this earth. And Jesus was trying to warn them that they have to take care. If not, they will get carried away by... He was not trying. He was warning. <laughs> Then um, the other part, the part B, 
what must we do about it today? It answers itself. When we start thinking of after this life, what happens to us after we are no more on this earth? I think it will help us a lot. In this uh, chapel, um, we had uh, Father Patrick Isiche, 81 year old, who came and spoke about this worldly, eth this worldly ultimate goals versus transcendental ultimate goals. When your ultimate goals are about my child, my wife, my business, my house, my car, if these are the goals that you center your life on, then you will be weighed down, dissipated. Your energies will be dissipated on all these. And you will forget what is supposed to be your ultimate goals. Instead of these worldly ultimate goals, all Christians are daily called to look at transcendental ultimate goals. That's what Christianity is all about. And it is a pity that even churches and pastors today focus on these worldly ultimate goals. No, no wonder stealing, it depends. <laughs> Isn't it? No wonder. Clearly evil things now depend. But if heaven, company with God, righteousness, living a life of holiness, if it was our goal, then stealing will not depend. What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Yeah. Give a round of applause. Okay, question two and four now. Yes. Chizoba, right? Okay. I want to go on question number two. Yes. And just like what Jeremiah says, that God is our righteousness. At the end of the verse 16, God our righteousness. So what I'm trying to emphasize on is, in this season, especially in, in, the, in this time that everybody is struggling, some persons want to get a new car to travel, some persons want to achieve this or achieve that, I want to encourage each and every one of us that we should take it easy with life so that we will not get into the wrong things or get to meet the wrong people who might influence take us. Take it easy with life. Yes, Father. Let me tell your neighbor, take it easy with life. Don't push yourself too hard. Uh -huh. So, I will first of all start by encouraging myself notwithstanding the circumstances so in all things, I want us to know that whatever you are not able to achieve from the month of January till now, just know that you have your life and you can still achieve more better once you are alive. And just have it in mind that in every struggle, just keep looking on to Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith. Thank you. Give a round of applause. Okay, Mary. The one word or phrase that adequately captures today's readings? Um, I think the one word or phrase that adequately captures all the readings is don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged. Can you put it positively? Be encouraged. Be encouraged. That be word. alert. Be encouraged that it, this is not the end of it. There is light at the end of the tunnel. and That, it is that is too long ago. Oh, that is it. Uh, that's, this is why people fail exams now. Make it one phrase. Be or hopeful. One. Be hopeful. Yes. Hope. Yeah. Oh, give her a round of applause. <laughs> Advent is a season of joyful expectation. Advent is a period of joyful expectation. That is a loaded uh, expression. Joyful expectation of the fulfillment of the promises of old. It is a season pregnant with new possibilities. When you see a pregnant woman, there's joyful expectation. It is a season pregnant with new possibilities. It is a season of excitement and longing. Longing for something refreshingly new. It is a time to look forward 
to something different. As Chizoba just said, if in the last 11 months you wanted to achieve some things this year, you did not achieve it, it is to look forward to something different. Advent is a time to anticipate a new world order. A new order of things in our families, in our country, in the world. It is a time to dream dreams. To dream dreams of the new heaven and the new earth. Dream. Talking about dreams, I'll keep on dreaming. Dream about tomorrow. Dream about the future. Dream about sunshine. Dream about flowers. Dream about springtime. New life. Dream about new life. Dream about love. Keep on dreaming. Oh, I'll keep on dreaming. Oh, dreams. Today may be dry, may be gloomy, may be dark. Men may be cheating and killing and dying. But I'll keep on dreaming until the new day dawns. Yet I'll keep on dreaming until the new day dawns. Dream, dream. Talking about dream. I'll keep on dreaming. Dream about tomorrow. Dream about the future. Dream about sunshine. Dream about flowers. Dream about springtime. Dream about new life. Dream about keep on dreaming. Oh, dream. I believe even love, even when I cannot feel it. I believe in the sun, even when it's not shining. And I believe in God's love, even when he is silent. So I'll keep on dreaming until the new day dawns. Yet I'll keep on dreaming until the new day dawns. Dream, dream. Talking about dreams. I'll keep on dreaming. Dream about tomorrow. Dream about future. Dream about sunshine. Dream about flowers. Dream about springtime. Dream about new life. Dream about love. About love. What do those images bring in your mind? Flowers, sunshine, springtime. That it pays to dream of flowers when everything is dried up. Fresh flowers. It pays to think of sunshine when it is all dark. This is what the prophets did. And this is what they want, the dynamic they want to get us involved in. And it is called prophetic imagination. Yes, a time, a new heaven, new earth, where God shall reign in the hearts of all people. Where righteousness and integrity shall be at home. And where Young people will not say it depends when you talk about cheating and stealing. Where justice and peace shall flow like water. Yes. In Advent, we celebrate. One, the generations of faithful people in Israel and elsewhere who waited with profound longing for the coming of our Savior. Today is a day to celebrate throughout the period of Advent to celebrate these faithful people through the course of times that through the course of time that waited on the Lord amidst hard harsh times. 
we celebrate the heroes and heroines of faith and hope who waited on God through the most trying times of conquest, of enslavement, of deportation to Babylon and desecration of the temple. In Advent, we celebrate our own deepest longings for a time when Christ's work on earth will be complete and God will be all in all. Our dreams and aspirations for the reign of integrity, justice, and peace in our country and in the land, in our land. In Advent, we celebrate those dreams for a just society. Dreams for a society where there is welfare, where the handicapped are taken care of adequately. Because we know that the measure of a civilization is not the number of private jets or skyscrapers but how the society takes care of those who are called least in that society. We know that. So until we get to that point, we will keep on dreaming. Think of the dreams of Prophet Isaiah and Jeremiah and Baruch and Zephaniah and Zachariah and John the Baptist. Think of the dreams of Martin Luther King Jr. I have a dream. Advent is also a time for sober reflection. It is a time of reflection. It is characterized by wakefulness. Stay awake. Watchfulness. Watch. Vigilance. Be on the alert. It is a time of prayer, of fasting, and of penance. At Advent, we reflect on the meaning of the incarnation. We reflect on the goal and mission of the Christian church in the period in between. In between what? In between the first coming of Christ and his second coming. In Advent, we reflect on the meaning and purpose of our individual Christian lives. So that our lives may not be dissipated. So that we may not be weighed down by the cares of this world. It is a time to reflect on what indeed is the purpose of our life. Advent is a time for focusing Oh, these cameras, they have, they have the focusing mechanism so that if, it, if the image is cloudy, they focus it and sharpen it. It is a time to sharpen our vision. Advent is a time of focusing our attention on the goal, which is eternal life. Many times as we travel through life, the dust of life, the mist of life, somehow they come onto our lens. And make us unable to see our goal sharp in a sharp manner. But we spend the period of Advent to refocus. Focus our eyes firmly on the prize. And what is the prize? Jesus Christ and eternal life. At the beginning of Advent, we read of the terrible signs and images of human suffering and cosmic disorder that will precede the end time. Luke chapter 21 verse 25 to 28. Christians are, however, supposed to understand the end time events positively and not negatively. Jesus paints such a gloomy picture of the future. I emphasize not to paralyze us with fear when the sun will jump down and men will be full of all kinds of things. There will be nations fighting nation, mother against father, against child, daughter against mother, in all kinds of things. Jesus did not say all this to paralyze us with fear, but to influence our lives in the present. The presentation of these frightful, otherwise frightful events at the end time, it is not meant to paralyze us with fear, but to make us stand erect in the present time and refocus our attention on what is important. The frightening events are to energize us into action. The purpose of speaking about the future is so that the present may be affected negatively? No, positively. Whereas the end time events spell doom and gloom for non-believers, for the unfaithful and those whose hearts are hardened, the end time event 
is a it is a day of liberation and salvation for the faithful we are told jesus tells us that two women will be at the grinding stone one will be taken the other will be left so one event biblically could be called the d day that d day spells doom for the unfaithful but that d day is the greatest day of rejoicing for the faithful this is why when the whole world is going in the terrible direction you have to ask yourself where do i stand if the end comes now on which side of the divide will i be found the faithful should await the end time with confidence with vigilance with prayer jesus says therefore stay awake be vigilant look reality in the face and conduct your lives accordingly look reality in the face with faith and conduct your lives accordingly for true christians the end time is not the end the end time is the beginning of true freedom he says when these things begin to happen stand erect and hold your heads high for your liberation is drawing near for true disciples of jesus the end is not a moment of terror and judgment it is a moment of salvation in advent we prepare for the celebration of the first coming of jesus christ in humility and in weakness and at the same time in advent we anticipate his second coming in majesty and power it's a double celebration we celebrate the coming of jesus christ in weakness and humility the first coming born in a manger chased up and down by herod and in the same advent we celebrate the second coming of jesus christ in majesty and power we celebrate the prophecies of isaiah and jeremiah and baruch and zephaniah and zachariah and john the baptist about the messianic times the time of victory we reflect on the words of jesus and of saint paul about the required conduct for subjects of the kingdom in the period in between we are living in the period in between the time in between the two comings of jesus christ is the time of the christian community and the time of christian action the time of christian activity this is when christians are to act when the lord comes back there is no more opportunity for christian activity this is the period of christian activity do you understand that and so it is not surprising that in this period in between that there should be a lot of debauchery infidelity promiscuity falsehood manipulation corruption that is the period that is the period where christian action is most useful uh, so the disposition that everybody is doing it doesn't make sense in the context of the gospel precisely jesus christ knows that everybody will be doing it but he says when the son of man comes on it will he find any faith on it will he find anyone standing so you tell yourself that well everybody is doing it jesus foresaw that that's why he wondered whether there will be any faith on it when the son of man comes this is the period of christian activity evil still pervades the land darkness still holds many people captive evil definitely pervades our land darkness definitely holds many people captive in the form of hatred and enmity and unforgiveness ethnic prejudice and social injustice corruption sexual immorality greed and avarice wickedness and hatred idolatry and occultism violence and crime we even have situations where states institutions are presiding over evil 
No longer evil of individuals, but evil of states, evil of organizations, international organizations, presiding over evil. In this period in between, there will be widespread iniquity, debauchery, corruption, but the Christian is called to be a sign of contradiction. This is what we find very hard to be, but this is our calling to be a sign of contradiction. You are not to blend. I am not to blend with the rest of the world. I am not even to blend with the rest of the people in my church if the rest of the people in my church are unfaithful. I am not to blend with the rest. We are supposed to live prophetic lives meaning constantly putting a searchlight as to is this in accordance with the gospel? And if it is not in accordance with the gospel I reject it. Even if I am standing alone, when the Son of Man comes, will he find any faith on it? There is too much of compromise. There is too much of, well, everybody is doing it. I talked to somebody about the life of adultery or fornication. He said, man, no be wood. The Jesus who gave us the command on purity. So Jesus who created us doesn't know that man, no be wood. You are the one telling Jesus that you are not wood. A woman no be wood. We compromise so easily and actually we sell ourselves out so cheaply. Because I, I shared with somebody recently and I said, we are not as weak as we pretend to be. We could, be, we could do better. We are not as in many areas of life we are not as weak as we pretend to be. We actually pretend to be that weak. We are not so weak. Human beings have done through the course of the ages, human beings have done heroic things. Human beings are capable of heroic things. And even our young people, young people to take notes. The world has been transformed over and over by the idealism of youth. By the zeal of youth, by the enthusiasm of youth. And all we are saying is bring that idealism into the life of faith. Bring that zeal into the life of faith. We are to bear witness to love, even though we know we live in the midst of hate. We are to bear witness to truth, though we know we live in the midst of falsehood. We are to bear witness to peace, though we live in the midst of conflict. We are to bear witness to light, Though we live in the midst of, we are to bear witness to faith, even though we live in the midst of doubt. We are to bear witness to hope, though we live in the midst of despair. And bear witness to life, though we live in the midst of death. Every day the social media is awash with death. Images of death. And some people are so hungry for images of death, and so, so eager to spread images of death that they don't even read the stories that accompany the gory pictures and they forward it. It's a death dying society. A, a society that loves news of death. If it is not tragic news, then it is not newsworthy. That society is finished. It's just remaining to fall down to be buried. A society where good news is no news. Where well, only horrible news is breaking news. A society where it is not breaking news. That Father George is singing and dancing and playing the harmonica. That's no news. But that Father George falls down in the church. That is news. Something is wrong with that society by the way. And we need to know that. It doesn't have to be so. People say it as if it's um, taken for granted that bad, bad news is what sells. You know, bad news is what sells. It is human beings that created that, you know, evil people created bad news as what sells. You can create a different kind of format. Advent is a time of commitment to the cultivation and promotion of such values of the kingdom as justice and integrity and holiness and righteousness and prayer and watchfulness. It is a time to cultivate love and self-sacrifice, peace and solidarity, mercy and compassion, forgiveness and acceptance. We hear stories every day about husband and wife 
having all kinds of issues husband and wife quarreling husband and wife beating one another husband and wife divorcing husband and wife whatever recently we celebrated a couple here uh, Jerome and uh, Christy Oswede because Christy Oswede was celebrating 70, 70th birthday and they did a video that they showed me and the whole, the, Jerome Oswede Dr. Oswede said that they have been married for 48 years that they have never quarreled and that the children said, ah, Daddy and Mommy, do you people ever quarrel? That should be news. That is very good news. But did any paper carry it? That is very good news. And when you watch the documentary they did, and what one witness after the other, the children, the people they brought up, said about this woman, this is good news positive news and I'm looking forward to some TV station some radio station that will say that I am only interested in good news you know people wake up like today Sunday morning some people woke up and listen to news you can hardly hear any news package eh? either all the items are negative if there's anything positive there, it may just be one little stuck in one little place. Don't you see that you are a debt dealing society? Don't you see that this is what they call a debt wish? A debt wish. You are living with a debt wish. And why are you surprised that we become what we celebrate? We become what we celebrate. You are looking for debt, you get more debt. You celebrate debt, you get more debt. And we can begin to do something different. To prepare for his second coming, Jesus admonishes us, number one, to do what? Not to be sleepwalking through life. And that means not to walk, waste one's life, not to get drowsy. To be awake spiritually is to be what? Open, receptive, sensitive. You see, many people are not open. Many people are closed. A priest came here for workshop, for the workshop we do for pastors and imams, and he said that today when people go to church, they go to church determine there is what they expect to hear and if that is not what they hear they go shopping for another place where they will hear what they want to hear is going to the presence of god to hear what you want to hear 70 80 percent of the times when you go to the presence of god you hear what you don't want to hear what you are not prepared to hear but people People decide this is what they want and then they shop around for which church preaches what they want to hear. Uh, something is seriously wrong with us. So, but to be open is to make ourselves amenable to hearing what we never prepared to hear. That's what it means to be receptive. That's what it means to be sensitive. That's what it means to be attentive to God. And then when we are so receptive, so open, then we will also be attentive to our neighbor and the needs of our neighbor. Two, Jesus asks us to watch. Watch means to be vigilant, to be on alert, to be on guard, to be responsible, to avoid dissipation and drunkenness, to avoid getting carried away by material things, to avoid our hearts becoming coarsened by debauchery. To watch means to be wise and have understanding. Professor Sude used to talk about people sleeping. A lot of people are sleeping. He's a big fan of uh, Anthony de Mello. Anthony de Mello, who, a, a, a mystic, a modern time mystic, who says that the majority of, li of people living in this generation are sleeping. Say they are born in sleep. They grow up in sleep. They go to school in sleep. They marry in sleep. And they die in sleep. 
And when you see the choices people make, the way we conduct our lives, if people were not sleeping, will our country be, be like this? If the so-called elite, economic elite, political elite, social elite in this society, if they were awake, will our society be like this? It is evidence of people who are running our country sleeping. That's why, that's why the society is the way it is. People who have not woken up. Because people who have woken up will be more sensitive to the needs of their brothers and sisters. People who are awake people who are awake will not feel comfortable to go to hotel with two, three friends and finish 100,000 naira and tomorrow say that they cannot pay 30,000 naira to a worker for him and his family for a whole month. People who are awake will not be able to do that. People who are awake would have made sure that public transportation like railway for the past how many years of our independence that we are still struggling with one old gauge a railway. If our leaders were awake then society will be conducted differently. Governance will be conducted differently. Economy will be conducted differently. If people were awake I don't know if you saw, some of you saw the thing, whoever posted something on social media about, they say it is uh, Putin that, uh, that said it, that Africans, uh, they, they come to bury, that Af it's only a burial ground, cemetery, that our place is only a cemetery. We carry our money to Europe, we carry everything, then when it is time to be buried, come on. No, we say make everybody they insult us. To watch means to be perceptive and to have vision, to care. To watch is to care, to be concerned. When so-called leaders chase the people they are supposed to be leading off the road for them to pass, the ones who are supposed to ensure that the traffic is moving and that people can get to where they want to get fast, they are the ones that chase the people off the road and they are scampering onto the gutter. If they are not asleep, tell me what is happening. And to sustain the sleep very well, they stay in tinted glasses. They color the glasses so that we don't see that they are sleeping. But they are sleeping. Yes. To watch means to be aware. To be sensitive. The Lord will come back in glory. We do not know when. But in the meantime, we must be ready. We should begin our faith journey with the end in view. Begin with the end in view. And all along the road, the end in view. If we are faithful to Christ and the values of his kingdom... When these things begin to happen, we shall be able to what? To stand erect and hold our heads high. Two, to be firm amid the chaos of the world. Three, to wait with confidence for Jesus' second coming. When we get too engrossed in simply satisfying our earthly cravings, the kingdom will come upon us unprepared. We will be shut out of Christ's kingdom of love, peace, and eternal glory if today we go on living senseless lives, getting drunk, pursuing blind and senseless pleasure, and defiling ourselves with adultery and fornication, killing ourselves over power and prestige positions, living a life of selfishness and greed and avarice, being resentful, malicious, and unforgiving, being insensitive to the sufferings of others. This is, this is very, very critical. And it is very predominant in this society. Insensitivity to the sufferings of others. And I keep saying that even our architecture expresses that insensitivity. These walls all over the, the place, I hate them. These walls all over the place. They are a physical barrier against knowing your neighbor and relating with your neighbor. 
it is terrible. The walls that FCDA approved is a 1.5 meter wall with some iron bars so you can see your neighbor's house and your neighbor's children very well. 1.5 meters. When people have 3, 4 meters building prisons for themselves. Physical barrier against relating with your neighbor. Even physical barrier against relating with the people who help you in the house. By making boys quarters and making the boys quarters or so called boys quarters face the fence rather than face the house. I don't know. I don't know how we develop this. And what am I doing in this kind of jungle? I don't know. How? How did people go to school and they never learned anything? What kind of education is that? How can people be sensitive to the needs of their neighbor when they have erected walls, prison walls between them and their neighbor? How? Advent points our attention to the future coming of Christ and teaches us to live each day with our gaze firmly fixed on the goal. Advent teaches us to begin each day and each year with the end in view. The only way to prepare for an unpredictable future is what? To be faithful in the present. It is to make ourselves ready by being active agents of love, of justice, of peace and reconciliation. It is to be daily conscious that this world is not our home. It is to be daily conscious that this world is passing away. It is to be daily conscious that we have an eternal home with Christ in heaven. Christmas gift. There is indeed, as we prepare for Christmas, only one gift at Christmas. And that gift is, this is why I say for us Christians, if anybody sends you a card with no image of Jesus, no name of Jesus in it, then you can package it, send it back and say, look, put Jesus in this. This is about Jesus. If you can't send it back, take a marker and write, rejoice, Jesus is born. Don't display cards in your houses that don't have Jesus. To make it easy for, for people, a lot of organizations say, oh, let's just have a generic card. A generic card is not a Christmas card. Do you understand me? Let's have a generic card. When you do generic card, then when it is time for Christmas, you have to be able to insert at least something of Christmas. Otherwise, today, I mean, the Western world that we are copying, they have lived Christianity for 2,000 years. They have rejected it. We, we have embraced Jesus Christ. We can't be copying them in every nonsense. Do you understand? So, of what use to say I'm sending Christmas card that has no reference to Christ, no reference to the child being born, no image of Christ, no image of the child, nothing. There is a history to Christmas card. And we are throwing that history away, but we are carrying on the, the motion. And I say, the reason for Christmas is Jesus. The only Christmas gift is what? Jesus Christ. And Advent prepares us to receive this gift. Scripture passages for reflection. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. And on those who have dwelt in the deep valley of death, a light has shone. Isaiah 9.1 Stay awake, for you do not know the day or when your master will come. Matthew 24.37-44 to the night is almost over. It will be daylight soon. Let us give up the things we prefer to do under the cover of dark. Romans 13, 11 to 14. And we await a new heaven and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, be eager to be found without spot or blemish before him. Second Peter 3, 4 to 14. Now we end with prophetic imagination. <coughs> A poem, Prophetic Imagination. Prophetic Imagination is the spiritual defiance of what is in the name of what ought to be. We all have that capacity to spiritually defy what is in the name of what ought to be. 
Spirit, uh, prophetic imagination visualizes an alternative future to the one fated by the momentum of current contradictory forces. Prophetic imagination breathes the fresh air of a time yet to be into the suffocating atmosphere of present reality. It is the unrelenting commitment to a new inevitability anchored on God's promised intervention. Prophetic imagination is the rejection of the world dominated by the powers of evil reflected in the regime of hatred, injustice, violence and war in favor of a new world, a new world overwhelmed by the forces of good characterized by the civilization of love, justice and peace. Amid widespread debauchery, multiple tragedies, despondency, discouragement and despair, prophetic imagination is pregnant with hope for long-standing victims of injustice. It energizes the remnant few who hunger for righteousness with the luminous visitation of dawn announcing the birth of a new day. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you. We glorify your holy name. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you that once again we are in this season of Advent. A season to be reminded of our goal. A season to be reminded that we are only in a period in between. A season to refocus. A season to watch. A season to pray. A season to be on the alert. Lord, grant us the grace of Advent. Grant us the grace of hope in this season of hope. Lord, all of us who have suffered failures and humiliation, disappointments in the course of the year, revive our hope at this time. Grant us that liberation that the Isaiah spoke about, that we may have that joyful expectation so that Christmas will mean a transformation of our fortunes to the glory of your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen.